hello everyone welcome to the lab one of the ec573 advanced embedded logic design winter 2022 semester so now we have done with our block diagram design we have completed our application writing and now we need to execute this program on the ps part of our zinc soc now depending upon the uh, kind type of hardware you have uh, the process varies okay so first i'm going to show that when i uh, show the process when you have the physical access to your board so that means your board is with you the z board is with you and you have the physical access to the board in that case you need to make sure that you power on the board and you connect the uh, usb uh, you connect the uh, your power, uh, usb cable to, uh, jtac cable to configure the board and you connect the uart cable to configure your uh, to uh, communicate with the UART interface. So in my case, I have connected two USB cable to my desktop. And then you need to open the software called TerraTerm. So in the TerraTerm, you need to select the appropriate USB port where your UART cable is connected. Then uh, click on setup, go to the serial port. Okay, and then set up the baud rate to 11520. Okay, once you do this, then you can go to your, uh, you can see that in the hardware server, by default, it is connected to the local one. So you don't need to worry about this one. Then click on, the, right click on your project. Either you do the run as where your entire application will be run executed or you do the debug as where you can do the debugging line by line so to begin with we'll do the run as and then launch on hardware so your code will be downloaded and the, on the hardware uh, on the ps part of the zinc soc and it will be executed so i click on the this launch on hardware and then on the uart you can see that the, the corresponding messages are displayed so here I can enter the value. Now, if you enter the value now, you won't see any thing which is being printed on the UART. So if you want to see that, what you can go, you can go to the terminal and create a check on the local echo so that you can see what you are printing on the terminal. So I'm printing the value 56. Okay, enter the new value of the data. So this corresponds to this line. And then I'll click on OK. And that value, you can see that the updated value of the data int is printed here. So this is how you can communicate the data with the UART in the two-way fashion. Now here you can see that uh, we have assigned the uh, this value, same value to the uh, single precision floating point as well as double precision floating point. But you can see here the actual value which is being stored, stored is slightly different in the single precision floating point. And this is the issue happen. This is the problem with the uh, word length uh, quantization because you, the floating point, um, uh, 32 bit floating point does not have sufficient bit to represent this number accurately. So there is a, some truncation has happened. While in case of the double precision floating point, you have the sufficient bits to store the this value as it is. So you can see that there is no error between the input value and the actual store value. So that's why selection of the word length is very important. <clears throat> now uh, we will see what happens when you don't have the physical access to the board and then how, and if you are accessing the board, which is connected to the university network, how you can uh, configure your uh, SDK. So again, here you need to go to the hardware server, click on the new target, uh, we have already shared the details about how to uh, book the time slot for your uh, board access. So once you book the time slot uh, and if the booking is successful, before your time slot begins, you will get an email saying that what is the IP address and the port address of your board. So here I'll select uh, remote uh, board. I'll make it as a default one. Then uh, I'll uh, have the IP, which for me, the IP is 192.168. This I have received over the email, 163, okay? 
and then the, my port address is 3121. But in your case, the port address might be different. So first thing is that uh, check on the use symbol server and set as default target, then test the connection. The connection has been established and click on OK. So you can see that now I have the another board connected uh, remotely. Now, the next thing is that now since the board is connected remotely, we don't have access to the UART because that UART pin is uh, connected to the corresponding board on the uh, machine which is connected to the board. So, but since we are doing the report remotely, we don't have access to the UART terminal of the board. So how to display or how to give the input to the board? Don't worry, we have the solution. So we go to the again system.mss, go to the board support settings, uh, click on modify this uh, BSP settings. So then click on standalone. And here you can see that whatever being passed on the UART in the input as well as output, we can, uh, we can uh, copy it to the, this core site uh, component zero. This is used for the debugging purpose. So we can use this one to uh, receive or communicate the, or to capture all the information communicated between the board and the UART, okay? So then uh, click OK, then uh, wait for some time. So your BSP is modified, board support package is modified. So you need to build your, uh, your the, board, the project will be, uh, will go through the build process again, okay? So if you see in the console, the entire project is being uh, built. So and after a few seconds, you will get the message that the build is successful. Okay, so now the build is successful. So that's good. So what we can do is that now we need to run this on the remote hardware. So here we can't use the run as because uh, we need to uh, see the display messages. So we need to do some more settings uh, changes in the uh, software. So what we'll do is that we'll do the debug as and then launch on hardware. So let's... Uh, click on this one so before we do the launch on hardware uh, we need to make sure that our program will get executed on the hardware so let's try with this launch on hardware and what happens so you can see that somehow it is being connected to the local server only so there is some issue with this sdk that uh, even if we have made the changes in the hardware server, it tried to connect to the local server and then it will give you the error that the, there is an issue in the board. So this is quite a common uh, problem. So what we need to do to avoid this problem, go here, then go to the debug ads and click on debug configuration. So in the debug configuration, We need to create a new uh, configuration. So we can see that the system debugger, uh, double click on this one. So now here you can see that uh, we are using the remote board, not the local board. And the rest of the process, you don't need to worry about it. It uh, will remain the same. So now let's click on the uh, debug option, click yes. So now you can see that now uh, my program is downloaded on my remote board, okay? So you can see that the, uh, the program has been downloaded, program has started the execution. And since we are in the debug mode, it will stop on the first line of your program. Now uh, we will study more about the debugging in the subsequent videos, but right now our focus is on executing the, our this code on the board. So as I told you, instead of the UART one, we need to use some alternative option. So what we are going to do, we are going to use the, go to the XCL uh, X, uh, console, and here we need to type the, the command, which is the JTAC terminal. So with this command, whatever we are communicating with the UART is will be displayed on this. Window. So all the stand in, standard input and sound standard output are redirected here. Okay. So then go to your uh, code. 
So let's uh, execute the code till this point. So click on this line, right click and run to line. So the code till this line will be executed. So you can see that now if you go to that uh, terminal, uh, you can see that there is some issue the you are not getting uh, displayed. So we will try to figure it out. What is the issue? Okay, so let's try it again. So click on the debug uh, launch on hardware. Okay, so I think the code is already running. So what we'll do is that we'll stop it and then relaunch it. So run. So go back to your main code. Write a deeper gas, deeper configuration. So we have uh, last time we already selected this deeper configuration. Okay, uh, standalone remote, make sure you have resetted the entire system, all three are checked and the rest is fine. Click on debug, yes. So your code has stopped at the first point, then click on the uh, JTAG terminal, uh, type the JTAG command, JTAG terminal, So you will get the screen something like this. Then let's run the code till this point. Okay, so now you can see that you are getting the first uh, printf hello world. Then uh, the integer values of the uh, different, all the three uh, variables float, uh, uh, double precision floating point as well as integer. Okay, there is one mistake here. I think we should use the proper name. So this is the copy paste mistake. Okay, so this is the copy paste mistake and then we can also run it till uh, this point, I run to this line now. We can enter the value, say we can write 45 and the updated value is 45 and then your code is executed. So let's start, uh, do it one more time. Run uh, debug ads, launch on hardware. We can save the code. So again, the same thing, go to the console, type JTAG terminal. Okay, so now let's run the entire code till this point. So let's enter the value 789 and you get the 789. So now you can see that in this fashion, you can run your code on the remote hardware, which is connected to our university network.